Hello everybody, today I will discuss about the different aspects of the solidification processing. So, in this particular uh, class I will not discuss any kind of the theory, but rather we will try to see some simulations associated with the solidification process and also I will try to solve some numerical problems to understand the solidification processing in better way. So, uh, casting process here the one of the most uh, important example of the casting process how you can observe the solidification behavior or we apply the different solidification theory to understand the cast structure of in cast component. So, in general uh, in casting process what are the solidification occurs that means there is a how the phase change from liquid phase to solid phase occurs that we will try to understand through the simulation. So, here you see at any instant of time t and this is the mold wall if you see this figure if you follow this figure this is the mold wall. Mold wall uh, made of uh, 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 this thing basically sand mold uh, here over which the liquid metal was pour this thing uh, from the top liquid metal pour. And now when you st ask start counting the solidification process basically we are trying to from the superheated temperature to how it is comes to the melting point temperature and, and at melting point temperature how there is a change of the uh, transformation from liquid phase to solid phase. So, at any inst instant of at any point of time if you observe this will create this thing that one part is the already solidified component the solidified metal that means it is the temperature below the melting point temperature, but at the it, it will create some kind of the solid liquid interface. So, interface means it is having some finite dimension and this depending upon the temperature gradient and the growth rate the interface stability can be decided and we have already discussed it depends on this two solidification parameter G and R at this interface stability, but interface looks like this it is a transition from the liquid phase to solid phase or other way the solid phase to liquid phase. So, this is solid phase to liquid phase we can see how the transition and the how the temperature actually varies. Now, explicitly interface we observe that small interface it is close to the melting point of uh, the solidified temperature and this is close to the liquid metal temperature. And at certain point of time it is a it is a there is a transformation occurs, but it is a uh, over a finite dimension or finite thickness value it usually occurs. And this is the liquid metal solid metal and this is the interface solid liquid interface we can say then or sometimes we can say that it is a kind of the mushy zone at the interface between the solid and liquid phase. Now, if you look into the simulation also how it looks like the simulation here you can see the simulation see it is starting from the, the mold wall the, the solidification starts from the mold wall and gradually if you see gradually solidification solidifying occurs and the, at the last stage very quickly that is solidify means very quickly there is a change uh, liquid phase to solid phase occurs. So, so uh, here we see that different kind of the this depending upon the, say the mold wall all throughout the mold wall the solidification starts all over this and it is moving towards the center point and when this part is this center point it means that at the last stage of solidification is occurs uh, at this particular center point usually because these are in contact with the liquid metal. So, this will quickly dissipate the heat through the uh, mold wall or uh, through the boundary. So, therefore, solidification will start from the mold wall through the process of the nucleation formation and then gradually it grow and finally, it is uh, and the composition of the here we have seen that the solidified component the color bar indicates that. Uh, the different the complete solidification occurred then we say it indicates the one that means complete solidification certain part and complete liquid it is a in the 0, but in between solid and liquid phase the different colors can be uh, mentioned here. So, here the different color actually indicate the solidified fraction or liquid fraction we can indicate between the solid as, um, between the solid and liquid phase. So, that the, the color bar indicates like that. So, this is the simple way to understand in the casting process usually then broadly you can see the how the solidification occurs, but we are not looking into that what kind of the interface stability is occurring or not or uh, that kind of phenomena will um, because that is the in that case the length scale are different. So, that we are not showing we are showing that overall the casting process and simply 
transformation from liquid phase to solid phase occurs during this process. Now, you see that continuous casting process that is the another simulation of the continuous casting process, but how it occurs continuous casting process if you see the arrow indicates there is the liquid metal inlet, it indicates the liquid metal inlet and gradually liquid metal and some part is a solidified metal on the wall and this is the outlet is the, the solidified component uh, from, uh, from this part. So, this is the inlet and this is the outlet of the solidified component. And here also you can see the different color, but indicates the what is the solidified the fraction of the component has been solidified. So, 1 means the 100 percent solidified occurs and 0 means the completely liquid phase is there and in between there is a transition from the liquid phase or solid phase or at the interface I can say the liquid and solid phase are in equilibrium conditions and color indicates the different uh, bar. For example, uh, points 0 0.7 it means the 70 percent the solid and uh, living in 30 percent even the liquid and that constitute that remains at the interface on this thing. But how it is different from the casting process the continuous casting process it seems that it is the if you see the solidification behavior or the movement of the solid liquid interface uh, that is different as compared to the mold sand mold casting process. So, here liquid metal is poured from the top and the uh, surrounding spite is a we give the high conductive material such that very quickly heat can be dissipated through the through this boundary and such that along the length it should solidify completely uh, before coming out from the system. So, we have to design the length of the in continuous casting process what can be the length this is the length uh, uh, of the in this case I can say length of the mold here that has to be decided such that at the end it should at least solidify uh, that it is a complete solidification should occur. But in this particular case if you observe then some part till it is in the liquid phase. So, when it is exist from this thing. So, at the steady state situation this is not the proper design because we need to extend further the mold wall such that we are allowing the solidification to solidification to occurs completely then it will come out from the uh, from the system. So, that way that uh, this deep, but up to what the what can be the length of this thing it depends exactly that what is the rate of the solidification uh, or indirectly solid rate of the solidification depends on that how effectively we are extracting the heat from the surface. So, usually we use the copper mold here the because copper is having a high thermal conductivity even even copper is also water cooled copper mold also can be can also be used or need. So, because it is basically a purpose is to effectively the heat extraction very quickly from the surface. So, here observe that uh, this the solidification part should complete it before exit from the, the system the from the mold wall. So, this is the condition for the continuous casting process we can see the simulation also how it works or how it looks see up to a certain point of time and here you can see that gradually after uh, it is basically take one particular shape uh, the solidified component and uh, we see that it is a initially complete liquid and gradually the, the this uh, there is a this this interface is moves towards the center and it creates one a fixed kind of the profile and that fixed profile means it is basically reaching the steady state situation at this particular with the condition of the heat extracts or the inlet temperature of the liquid metal and rate of the heat distribution from the wall that make it one, one fixed profile at the steady state situation. But when if you consider the transient state it is try to settle down the moving of the solidification towards the center and then it is it is the steady state situation. So, mean to see that this steady state situation can achieve with a perfect combination of the heat loss from the surface and what is the inlet temperature of the material or I can say that metal properties or what type of the metal we are utilizing based on that this profile can be decided. So, therefore, so here we see till it is in the liquid phase. So, even it is reaching the steady state. So, it should have been extended further such that no liquid phase will be there during the exit and that is the principle of the continuous casting process. So, here this continuous process directly can utilize the slab thus already solidified component and with the single mold this complete process 
can be performed. So, this is the one advantage of the continuous casting process as compared to the other conventional uh, sand mold uh, process. Now, we will try to look in the other aspect of the solidification process that is the microstructure formation during the uh, solidification process. This is a simulation we can see the color bar indicates the this temperature the different temperature indicates the different uh, color bar. So, 964 I think low melting point material we have utilized here and uh, uh, in this case and uh, this is the this is the completely liquid phase this is complete liquid phase and blue color it is basically already reached to the uh, solid phase. So, in between there is some interface if it is a different color it will create the interface at this point there is transition from the liquid phase to solid phase occurs or I can say the solid liquid uh, this um, solid liquid interface moves one particular direction depending upon the the rate of the heat ex extraction uh, from this particular mold. Now, here we see because microstructure actually depends on the uh, what are the temperature distribution in the within the sample it decides what kind of the microstructure usually occurs apart from the other factors that is why we put is the microstructure formation as well as the temperature distribution. If you see it is a more or less the already solidified at a particular instant already solidified part this is associated with the almost equiex kind of the grains. Now, further what kind of the grains it will try to form we can see that. So, if we, that if you see there is a the columnar dendrites usually forms and the dendrites form and finally, it is attached to the complete process and gradually it is complete transport from equiex to columnar grain and towards the center more or less equiex kind of the grains usually forms. And once it is blue color means it, there is a complete sol solidification completed. So, uh, say again that if you see that interface moves very quickly and the interface is moving by forming the some kind of the dendritic structures and finally, interdentic dendritic space uh, also filled uh, uh, from by the liquid metal and use it forms see that if you see the dendritic uh, it is see the columnar grains it forms and equiex grains is formed towards the center. So, this is the typical microstructure associated with the uh, solidification process. Now, here I can see very clearly that uh, this uh, pull down uh, specimen is pulled down at 10 micrometer per second and nucleation and fragmentation are observed at the initial stage. So, how the nucleation occurs? and uh, at the solid liquid interface we can observe in this particular image and we have taken the references this is very informative and we see what are the nucleation occurs uh, in practically and how what sometimes the dendritic fragmentation also occurs and this fragmented dendritic also start the nucleation process and uh, that theoretically we have explained all this phenomena but here you can uh, visualize that what are the nucleation usually occurs. So, let us look into this first figure it is a uh, aluminum copper alloy and we see the aluminum 15 percent remaining percent copper and uh, the interface is moving specimen is pulled down or 10 micrometer per second to understand the what are the nucleation and further growth occurs in this particular situation. If you see this figure if you see this is moving solid liquid interface is moving and if you see the dendritic structure forms dendrites forms gradually dendrites form and it try to grow and the different and say interdendritic inter space also that is filled with the till it is in the liquid phase and and there is observation of the continuously the dendritic structure on this uh, the primary dendritic secondary dendritic usually uh, quickly form and you can see uh, all these cases also uh, uh, that this if you see that there is a some spaces available which is filled with the interdendritic space which is filled with the liquid metal. So, that we observe in the theory, but we observe very, uh, here practically we observe that what way the nucleation occurs uh, or uh, in this particular process we can observe once again also uh, to better understanding of this process and uh, see that dendritic forms in front of the solid interface and as well as the gro growth also primary secondary dendritic growth is also observed gradually to grow and see some fragmented dendrite also forms and it will try to uh, further take part in the nucleation process here. And we observe that is the this uh, typical uh, dendritic structure 
in associated with the in copper aluminum alloy system. So, this is very clear observation or visualization of the what where the nucleation occurs. Now, you can see the another process the directional solidification the simulation for the directional solidification you understand this is one solidification techniques we, we have analyzed the direction solidification basically sol solid liquid interface moves one particular direction. And here see that this solid liquid moves in, uh, in particular direction and uh, there is no lateral movement of the solid liquid interface. Since the directional solidification, so he, we can promote the maximum heat extraction one particular direction and that actually enforced to move the solid liquid interface in the one particular direction not in the other direction or any, any other lateral direction. And this is the principle of the directional solidification. He will observe all the simulation very clearly that solid liquid interface is moving one direction and the fraction of solid liquid fraction also. We can see solid fraction is the two di different color one indicates the 100 percent solidification occurs and 0 indicates that it is the all are in the liquid phase. So, this is simulation to visualize the directional solidification making a different kind of the component. Now, understanding of the microstructure evolution during the rapid solidification we observed the rapid solidification basically in rapid cooling rate is very high and to accommodate uh, this high cooling rate the structure uh, we can observe the different types of the microstructure in the and sometimes we observe there is a kind of the defects also micro seg segregation may also occur between the grains and this is the typical behavior associated with the rapid solidification. Here you see the figure first figure if you observe that almost uh, equiaxed grain structure equiaxed grain structure and at the boundary the starting the columnar grains usually observe. The second figure at this first one after 5 microsecond, second figure after 8 microsecond if you see there is a growth at the equiax to columnar transition usually occurs in this cases uh, during the rapid solidification and it is very clearly you know, one particular direction the columnar grains uh, observe. And when it is the 11 microsecond further columnar grain observe uh, the growth or uh, that means the columnar growth one direction is occurs and this part is the chill zone relatively in this the equiax part as compared to this. And then here also you can see this part is basically the when the transition from the equiax to the columnar transition zone here and further growth of the um, this columnar one particular direction and bigger grains we observe one direction after the 14 microsecond and 18 microsecond we see complete columnar grain up to this part and the further growth of the occurs here you can see and after 18 microsecond also uh, we see this is the, the mostly the columnar grains observed but different orientation grains orientation are different in these two cases. And these are the uh, one simulation associated with the uh, rapid solidification that means the rate of the heat extraction is very high. Uh, in, the, in this particular case we can expect this type of the growth and sometimes we can observe the ab abnormal growth also uh, very uh, these cases and uh, associated with the rapid solidification. Now, during the growth right hand side figure if you see the we are plotting the concentration the percentage of the copper and uh, the different color bar indicates uh, uh, like that uh, concentration of the aluminum uh, um, I think uh, concentration of the copper here. And here you observe the very clearly observe the different uh, this equiax to columnar transition in these cases. But if you see at the grain between the this uh, equiax to the columnar transition at this particular transition zone, we can observe the segregation behaviors of the uh, of the grain. And apart from these things, during the rapid solidification, we see the how the grain structure are different. Is the columnar and fine uh, fine columnar also we can observe the the latter stage also and uh, if you see the transition zone the equiax gains usually very fine as compared to the other part so transition zone where you can observe the segregation of the grains here you can see the transition uh, at this transition zone the very fine grains usually of usually um, we observe and then after that there is a columnar transition also occurs uh, in this particular case so this is the microstructure evolution during the rapid solidification this is just a visualization of the rapid solidification process. 
Now, with this, uh, we will try to we the just to showing the different kind of the simulation. We understand that uh, the visualization is better way to understand the solidification process or the different elements of the solidification process. Just try to uh, um, analyze. Now, I will try to discuss about the numerical problems associated with the solidification process and probably this will better understand to, uh, for the application of the theory whatever we learn uh, uh, during the course of the work and let us see how this theory can be applied to solve a numerical problem for the understanding of the process. So, let us start, uh, start with the first problem. See carefully we look into this problem for a binary alloy system the equilibrium freezing range is about 70 degree centigrade. Equilibrium freezing range is basically that the temperature between the solidus and liquidus temperature, the difference of the solidus and liquidus temperature. So, it is given around 70 degree centigrade. If the growth rate of is 4.5 into 10 to the minus 3 that is given millimeter per second and the diffusion coefficient is uh, in this case is the 3 into 10 to the minus 5 centimeter square per second then what is the minimum temperature gradient required for the planar solidification at the oil center line that we have to calculate. So, let us look back into the theory also. We can see that T1 and T2 are the liquidus and solidus temperature for the bulk composition X0 and in this case condition for the stable planar, uh, planar interface is the temperature gradient T dot L and T dot L should be greater than or equal to T1 minus T3 that is basically delta T that is the we can see the equilibrium freezing range and D is the correspond to the diffusion coefficient of the liquid metal and the and V is the this in this case we are the growth rate or uh, velocity uh, the we can say that either we can in terms of the growth rate we can say or the the interface velocity also that also we can say the, uh, the V. So, first problem if you see that uh, this delta T is given, D also given, growth rate also given, but T dot L which is corresponds to the temperature gradient at the interface this is not given. Now, with this condition for the stability for the planar interface T dot L that means DTL by DX at the interface should be greater than equal to uh, greater than delta T by D by V. So, uh, that actually indicates this. So, if you remember we just temperature gradient uh, G and growth rate if you remember G by R should be greater than equal to delta T by delta T by D. So, growth rate is R is equivalent to V here G is corresponds to the temperature gradient T dot L here the liquid phase delta T equilibrium feeding range and this is the diffusion coefficient. So, if we apply this thing we can be able to for the stability for the planar interface what is the minimum temperature required for the planar solidification. So, stability of the planar solidification indicates that T dot L should be very high at the interface. So, therefore, minimum value is required is that this delta T by D into V. If you do that then we will be able to get the values of the temperature gradient here. So, this is the first problem. Now, second problem if we look in a binary alloy system the thickness of the boundary layer at steady state is equal to 0 0.1 millimeter. Solidus and liquidus temperature of the alloy is given. For a stable planar solid liquid interface what is the minimum temperature gradient at the solid liquid interface? Here also we, are, we have to calculate the, what is the minimum temperature gradient at the interface. So, use the same formula but a different way also. You see uh, this we can see equivalent to G this is equivalent to R. Now, del here the liquidus solidus temperature is basically delta T is given defined and uh, boundary layer here. So, boundary layer is basically in this case the boundary layer is the here the diffusion coefficient D by velocity V interface velocity that actually indicates the boundary layer formation and it depends on the what is the diffusion coefficient that means uh, uh, this coefficient of the diffusion and what is the uh, interface is moving at what velocity that ratio indicates the boundary uh, the uh, boundary layer thickness in this particular case. So, here if diffusion of coefficient ship is given 0 0.1 millimeter say so I suppose it is centimeter square per second and velocity is equal to centimeter per second. So, unit will be the centimeter. So, therefore, 
delta is given here. So, we can see that d by v is given 0 0.1 millimeter t 1 by t 3 also given then we can easily calculate what is the T L dot that means what is the temperature gradient that we can easily calculate. So, this is the second problem uh, we solved the very simple uh, these two problems now look into the other problems also. In this case it has been asked the solute concentration of a binary alloy system is given 38 percent 38 percent of the copper at equilibrium solidification of a particular temperature the liquid fraction also given 0 0.2. If the equilibrium segregation coefficient at the temperature is 0 0.7 what is the composition of the solid and liquid. First we say uh, we see that it is a equilibrium condition. So, therefore, solidification occurs at equilibrium solidification it means that at any intermediate temperature T in between say for example, intermediate temperature T 2. It, it is the it is following the during the if you lowering the temperature from the liquidus temperature to the solidus temperature it is basically following the solidus and liquidus line ok. So, here at this temperature T 2 we see this is the x s and this is x l these are the composition of the solid phase and liquid phase and it is following because with respect to changing the temperature then x s and x l are actually varying. Now, at particular temperature say fixed temperature T 2 it is given k equal to given 0 0.7. So, k equal to 0 0.7 was given because that is the segregation coefficient at that particular temperature. So, k can be calculated like this way also the liquid fraction. So, here x s by x l other way I can say that f s by f l also can be calculated. Now, f s is given the liquid fraction sorry f l was given 0 0.2 and solid fraction equal to 1 point minus 0 0.2 is basically 0 0.8. So, we can easily calculate f s 0 0.8 divided by the f l 0 0.2 k can be easily calculated here. Now, it is given the 38 percent that means, x 0 was given uh, that it is given the x 0 is basically uh, 38 percentage of uh, copper. Now, uh, we have to calculate what is the composition of the liquid and solid x what is the values of the x s and x l. Uh, the liquid composition uh, solid composition. Now, if you see that the lever rule if we apply suppose this is the composition x 0 and this is the solid phase x s composition and this is the uh, x l. Now, solid fraction is given that uh, um, 0 0.8 and liquid fraction equal to 0 0.2. So, if we apply the lever rule also we see that 0 0.2 equal to that x s x 0 minus x s divided by the x l minus x s for example. And if you fraction 0 0.8 equal to x l minus x 0 divided by x l minus x s. Now, here we can see that x 0 is defined 30 percent uh, 30 percent copper that means 0 0.3 x 0 and if it is x s here if you see we have the unknown x s and x l are unknown in this in this case. So, from these two equations we can easily solve by putting the values of the x 0 we can solve for x s and x l. So, therefore, we can estimate the what is the composition of the liquid and uh, solid phase in this particular case. Now, question number 4 the variation of the copper concentration along a unidirectionally solidified bar. So, in this case the aluminum 2 percentage of the copper 2 8 percent copper alloy assuming no depletion in the uh, in the solid and perfect mixing in the liquid phase is considered. So, where aluminum copper phase diagram shows that x max equal to this and x e. So, if you consider no deposition in the solid and perfect mixing in the liquid phase it is basically following uh, this line particular and in liquid phase it is following this liquidus line, but definitely in this case this the solidification will terminate after reaching the eutectic composition it actually reach up to the 
x e component, but here a, this is the x max component equal to this, this is the maximum comp composition and this is the eutectic composition uh, of this bar. Okay. Now, we apply this thing in the similar way that we need to find out what fraction of the bar will solidify to a eutectic structure because the eutectic solidification occurs at the last stage and definitely in this condition it will always reach to the eutectic composition. Now, we need to find out what fraction of the bar will solidify to uh, the to a eutectic structure. So, here x 0 is for, for, for example, uh, the first we are looking into the question number a 4 a. So, here x 0 2 weight percent of the copper. So, x 0 is given. Now, k equal to we know the x s by x l, but in this case k is the x s equal to x max because and x l equal to x e because the solid phase can go up to x max at the eutectic when you try to uh, the eutectic temperature the eutectic solidification occurs the maximum composition for the solid phase go up to x max and maximum composition uh, composition for the liquid phase has to go to the, the eutectic composition. So, therefore, we replace x s equal to x max and x l equal to x e. So, using these two we can easily estimate what is the values of the k because k equal to in that case x s by x l that means x max by x e. So, that is given x max and x e. So, from there we can find out the k value. So, once k value is known then we can use the this non equilibrium lever rule in this case. So, x l equal to x zero equal to f l k to the power uh, k minus 1. So, again here x l can go uh, liquid can go x e x this is correspond to the x e and x 0 is already defined x 0 is given 2 weight percentage of the copper and f l is unknown here and k we have already calculated k minus 1 from here we can calculate k and this is known quantity. So, from here we can easily what is the value of the f l. So, how much fraction liquid fraction? So, basically we can estimate the liquid fraction when solidification occurs at the eutectic composition this is the liquid fraction. So, it indicates that what is the liquid fraction exists. So, it will be able to fraction of the solid but will solidify the eutectic structure that will convert it to the eutectic structure uh, after solidification. So, F L will be the F L fraction will be the answer here, but not the F not the F S that is not true. So, here f l has to be calculated. Now, the similar kind of the exercise can also be performed if x 0 is simply replaced by the 0 0.5 weight percentage of the copper under the same condition. So, we just simply replace the x 0 equal to 0 0.5 and remaining process will be the same in this particular case. Now, again apply the cells equation that means non equilibrium uh, uh, freezing range non equilibrium um, non equilibrium lever rule if you using this thing we need to calculate what is the mean solid concentration under non equilibrium freezing conditions for nickel 50 percent copper at a temperature of 1390 degree centigrade. So, the mean partition coefficient equal to 0 0.56 and the liquid composition is 55 percent copper at 1319 degree centigrade. So, here the liquid composition is given uh, at this particular temperature 1319 that is the 55 percent of the copper and non equilibrium freezing condition exist in this case. So, we need to apply the non equilibrium lever rule here. So, T is given T equal to 0 in this 1319 degree centigrade and we started the condition the composition x 0 equal to here 50 percent of the uh, 50 percent copper and this liquid composition x l equal to 55 percent copper. So, we can easily apply the f l the other way that uh, cells equation that f l can be calculated in terms of x 0 x l 1 by 1 minus 1 minus k here. So, k also given k partition coefficient is 0 0.56 also given. So, k is known x 0 also known x l also known we can easily calculate what is the liquid fraction in this particular case. Now, 
we need to calculate the mean solid concentration under non-equilibrium non condition. So, mean solid concentration is something like that we can see the mean solid composition equal to Xs into Fs this is the solid fraction that should be equal to the initial composition was X0 minus liquid fraction into Xl that should be balanced this is the solid fraction. So, uh, solid fraction and here the initial composition minus the liquid part and then it becomes also solid. So, from here we can easily find out the, what is the, the equilibrium value that means the average value or mean value in this case. So, mean value can be calculated x0 we uh, are given fl we can calculate xl also define and f s we need the f s value because once we get the f l value we can easily calculate what is the f s value 1 minus f l. So, there and then from there we can calculate what is the x s equal to 29 percent of the copper. So, this way we can calculate the problem this problem can be solved. Now, this is another problem associated with the uh, solidification uh, this thing or maybe we can say the nucleation uh, process. Uh, here we need to estimate the number of crystal like cluster. So, basically estimate what can be the number of cluster can form in 1 millimeter cube of the copper. So, 1 millimeter cube of the vol copper volume we need to find out what is the total number of cluster will form at its melting point for spherical cluster. So, cluster is the shape of this cluster is the spherical cluster and melting point at, the, at that but we asked at the at the melting point containing the 10 atoms if suppose one cluster containing the 10 atoms or containing the 60, 60 atoms then uh, uh, that we have to calculate from here. So, the 10 atoms and 60 atoms and what can be the uh, number of cluster in this case. So, all the values of the given the atomic volume of the copper liquid copper is given the interfacial energy also given and the um, Boltzmann's constant also given and melting point temperature of the copper also given. Now, we know the population that means concentration of the critical embryo is given is that n r equal to n 0 into e to the power minus delta g by k t that is that we know and basically the concentration of the this critical uh, embryo. So, it depends on the what is the any uh, n 0 n 0 is the uh, initial value of the this atoms n 0 is the total number of atoms in the system, k is the Boltzmann's constant factor and delta g is the gives free energy change or excess energy associated with the cluster. So, with this particular cluster and t is the temperature here. Now, we can estimate total free energy energy associated with this thing delta g equal to minus 4 by 3 pi r cube delta g v. If uh, the, the particle or nucleus uh, the one particle size is r and the 4 pi r square the interfacial energy uh, 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 assuming it is a uh, size is the sphere. So, 4 pi r square into gamma SL. Now, if you see at equilibrium melting temperature at t equal to T m equilibrium melting temperature there is no change in the volume free energy. So, delta g v equal to 0. So, once delta g v equal to 0 we put this equal to 0 then delta g equal to 4 pi r square into gamma SL. So, gamma SL value is known and uh, we can we can uh, need to find out what can be the r the size of the uh, sphere in this case. Now, 4 by 3 pi r cube is basically is assuming this is the size of the this uh, this uh, cluster may be a particle size that is equivalent to the n n is the number of atoms in the cluster number of cluster and what is the atomic volume we know. So, if you know the number of atoms in the cluster and each atomic volume of each, each uh, atom uh, from there and that is equivalent to the 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, that means within one cluster this is the number of atoms and n equal to number of atoms and multiplied by atomic volume. So, here atomic volume is known quantity and n is the number of atoms in a cluster. Now, and that is equivalent to the size 4 by 3 pi r cube. Now, here we just here uh, the uh, n is basically at assuming n is variable here in this particular case the n is variable. So, r can be represents in terms of the n here. So, when r can be represented in terms of the year in, in terms of the n and I put the value of the r here. So, then it is a function of n it the uh, n will be the function of this 
equation. So, delta g is basically function of n we can we can easily find out from here. Now, for 1 millimeter cube we can estimate what is the total value of the injury that means what is the injury is the total number of atoms in the system and we know the uh, for the copper the lattice parameter and all the values are available for the copper from there we can estimate for 1 millimeter cube of the copper what is the total number of N0 that means total number of atoms within the system in case of the 1 millimeter cube copper we can easily estimate. So, here from here we can estimate the N0. So, now N0 is defined then delta g calculate which is a function of the n here and k and t also defined because t is uh, t is the defined exactly melting point temperature and k Boltzmann constant also defined. So, we can estimate n r at particular t equal to t m. So, when you estimate n at t equal to t m it because delta g is a function of n. So, n r is basically a function of n will be there. Now, for n equal to 10 putting the n equal to 10 value because we asked for what can be the its melting point spherical cluster what can be the um, cluster size uh, number of cluster in case of 10 atoms. So, if you put n equal to 10 atoms then what is the calculate the we can estimate what is the values of the n r. If n equal to 60 we can easily calculate what is the values of the n r. So, while putting the different atoms numbers we can estimate what can be the total number crystal like cluster can be formed in 1 millimeter cube of the copper and that it happens exactly at the uh, melting point temperature. So, this uh, this problem can be tackled in this way. I am not saying the numerical calculation, but I under I, I hope that you will be able to understand how to do uh, the numerical calculation if the all quant uh, all these values are given uh, for this particular problem. Now, we look into another problem that is the uh, this is a different problem the solidification uh, techniques and associated with that the estimate the solidification time for 12 centimeter thick slab shape casting of iron when water cooled copper uh, mold is used and assuming the no resistance at the mold metal interface and use the following data. So, here no resistance at the mold metal interface by looking into this particular statement we need to understand what kind of the problem is to be solved here in this particular case. Now, this problem is and it is a uh, metal casting uh, the uh, thick slab, but the uh, cop the this uh, mold metal is made of the copper the metallic component. So, in this particular case uh, we can see we can uh, from there assuming no resistance at the mold metal interface. So, here we can use this expression this is the expression that we have already discussed in the theory also that in this particular case this is the relation between the uh, temperature and the different parameter zeta. So, here you see the zeta square in the error function of the zeta L root pi latent heat theta f freezing temperature uh, theta is the uh, surface temperature all given. Mm -hmm. So, from here we need to calculate the, the here you see that uh, theta s the surface temperature assuming the initial temperature is 28 degree and 1540 freezing temperature initial temperature and C s, C s can be calculated we already calculated the uh, okay, C s specific heat uh, is given uh, C s equal to here 0 0.67. So, specific heat uh, is given the specific heat is given and uh, uh, 6.07 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, uh, I think into 1000 that means joule per kg Kelvin and L latent heat this one root pi and but this is unknown. So, here from this we need to calculate what is the zeta value. So, if we calculate but of course, this calculation is not very straightforward we have to follow the trial and error method to estimate what is the values of the zeta. So, once we value estimate the values of the zeta if you see the all the zeta value can be estimated, but we need the only the other side only few few known parameters are, uh, are there and zeta can be estimated from there. And we know that once we estimate the zeta, the solidification time is in this case equal to h square by the, the thickness of the slab by 16 into zeta square into alpha. So, here once we calculate the zeta, alpha is the thermal depressivity easily calculate alpha s equal to k by rho Cp. So, here k thermal contribution given uh, density and C s also given the specific heat from there we can estimate the alpha s. So, alpha s can be estimated h also given the thickness of the slab is given zeta you have to calculate. So, once you calculate all this thing 
we can we can estimate what is the solidification time equal to 0 0.1115 hour. So, this is the typical uh, problem associated with the this casting process. So, we can solve this problem, but only obstacle is the this to once we know the even if you know the formula, but we, we need to follow some trial and error method then only be able to estimate the uh, zeta function in this particular case. So, I mean to say that just looking into this uh, conditions that means what kind of uh, uh, this condition is occurs here no resistance at the mole metal interface and it is the water cooled copper is utilizing just looking into this thing we need to apply the this specific formula that we have already discussed in the uh, in the theory part. Now, I try to very simple another problem uh, that is the here we see that a 6 millimeter thick plate of stainless steel. So, k given is steady state is moving air on one side. So, one side is the moving air and uh, uh, that uh, the steady state moving on one side the convection coefficient is given this side and temperature also given 300 Kelvin and stagnant air on the other side. So, other side the stagnant air convection coefficient is less in this cases and temperature is equal to 280 degree centigrade. So, here temperature 280 degree centigrade are definitely here 300 Kelvin uh, sorry 280 Kelvin and other side is a 300 Kelvin. Calculate the heat flux and the surface temperature. So, remember it is, is at steady state. So, at steady state we see we can simply that what we understand the different mode of the uh, convection uh, conduction and radiation and we calculate that uh, the thermal resistance also thermal resistance component depending upon the mode of the uh, heat transfer. So, here we see that Q by A. So, suppose Q is the heat flow and A is this cross section area normal to that uh, normal to the vector Q. So, Q by A can be calculated this is the flux is the temperature difference because this is the higher side temperature 300 Kelvin this is the lower side 280 Kelvin. So, therefore, I put it here uh, this part then gradually heat is conducted from higher to lower side through here the convection this side convection and this side is the uh, conduction through the medium at 6 millimeter thickness. So, here we see the final two temperature difference T infinite uh, 1 and 2. So, this temperature and this other temperature differences total I can say the thermal potential the temperature difference between these two and what is the resistance component here 1 by H 1 convection L by K conduction 1 by H 2 the other side convection. So, these are the total resistance component. So, convection, conduction and radiation from here we can easily calculate these two values are given h1 k h2 and length over which the heat conduction occurs and this is the value 992 watt per meter square uh, flux and surface temperature because surface temperature is t0 and say tl t0 and tl so that also because this is the heat flux is the same at steady state it will be the same so, now if we consider the convection and this uh, between these two. So, here also you can see the heat heat occurs through the con, uh, from here uh, to here through convection. So, that is why Q by A H 1 between the T infinity minus T 0 because this is the higher temperature minus T 0. And from here we can see that Q by A we have already calculated H 1 is known quantity t infinity 1 that is also known quantity only t 0 is unknown. So, from here we can easily estimate t 0 equal to 296.67 Kelvin. So, this is can be estimated like that. Now, T L when T L then we are consider the heat uh, heat flux between t 0 and T L. So, it k heat flux q equal to k a into del t by del x. So, here heat flux that means q by a equal to uh, sorry a is, uh, is this side is already there. So, q equal to k a d t by d x. So, uh, that should be equal to the same h to a t l by t infinity. From here we can see or you can see the q by a equal to k uh, t 0 minus t l divided by l. So, here this is already calculated k is given 
T0 is uh, T is already calculated, TL is unknown and L also the given. So, from here we can easily calculate what is the values of TL. So, therefore, with this this kind of the problem and because it is very important it is mentioned the steady state. So, heat flux will be the same at this interface inside this here also heat flux will be the same and if we consider the individual comp uh, uh, resistance component that convection, conduction uh, this point of convection we apply the law that and uh, heat flux and from there you can easily calculate what is the unknown temperature in this particular case. Now, this is another very simple problem that is the in case of the solidification of a pure metal the latent heat of fusion specific surface energy melting temperature degree of supercooling all are given and what is the critical radius and the corresponding activation volume free energy for the homogeneous nucleation process. So, this is the active corresponding activation volume free energy means in this case we are getting total delta G not not the delta G V because here total free energy the what is the I can say that uh, total activation energy or is required to critical values activation is required to start the nucleation process that we have to calculate in case uh, but also it in it, this is the case of the homogeneous nucleation process. So, here we see that critical radius we already that explain the theory also here the gamma S L the surface I think uh, the surface energy is given melting point temperature latent heat 1 by delta T the, the degree of undercooling is given all our values are given uh, we can easily calculate what is the R star, R star critical size of the nucleus. So, 3 into 10 to the power minus 10 uh, meter. Now, volume free energy in this case or uh, free energy for the homogeneous nucleation process here also the theory is already explained. We put these values gamma this is surface energy melting point temperature latent heat and the this is the degree of undercooling or degree of supercooling in this case and all this is basically calculate this is the amount of the energy is required to start the minimum amount of the energy is required or critical amount of the energy required to start the nucleation process. Actually, if you remember we plot the delta R values and this and, and here we have seen the this variation of the delta G. So, here this is corresponds to the R star and this corresponds to the delta G star value. So, we are basically calculating what is the R star value and what is the this critical size and at critical size what is the critical amount of the energy barrier is required or activation energy is required to start the homogeneous nucleation process. So, with this I, uh, uh, I just uh, conclude the part of the explanation of the different numerical problems. I hope uh, the solution of the different numerical problems uh, to will help to understand the, the different aspects of the solidification process. In the, in the in better way. Uh, so, that is all thank you very much for your kind attention.